your your belief is that Caleb Williams is not the best prospect in the draft, correct? Correct. And that's not to say that he's not a really talented quarterback and, you know, there's a good chance he goes somewhere and, and has a really great career because he may. Um, I believe the best prospect in this class is Drake May. Um, I think when you go through, like when you just look at all the different things that you want to evaluate in a quarterback, you know, from size, arm strength, athletic ability, ability to anticipate, process, uh, intelligence, competitiveness, leadership. Um, like to me, and I, I hope you've met, you know, look, I've been at ESPN for over 15 years. I don't think that I've, you know, I've never been like a hot take kind of guy. Look, I was been a part of evaluating quarterbacks, you know, every year for 15 years now. And I think he's as good of a prospect as I've seen. And like, look, I didn't say that about Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. You know, I, I, so, you know, I'm not just like saying that, like, I think he's that good of a prospect. So I, I think his physical talent and size combination puts him in the rarefied air with guys like Josh Allen and Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes. Like that, that is the kind of elite company that he keeps in terms of size, athleticism, arm strength, you know, accuracy, like that type of stuff. And that's a big deal. Tim, when we talk about the quarterbacks, though, each year with the draft, it, there's a lot of misses. And then when we go back, yeah. we say, what did we miss about Patrick Mahomes? You know, what was it? So what are the intangibles, which so often are, you know, kind of it's what you're gambling on. Uh, what are the intangibles that a Drake may might have versus a Caleb Williams? Yeah. So here's what I would say, like, just real quick on the Mahomes front, like, he was a really raw prospect. Yeah. Like I'm sure that everyone in Chicago has gotten beat up every which way about like, you know, Patrick Mahomes and, and, and all that, but he was a super raw prospect. And there was a reason he did not play his entire first year, but for the last game of the season. So like, I think there's, it's also easy to go back and say, well, we should have known that. Right. So look, would it have been great if Mitchell Trubisky had like two more full years as a starter? Sure. That would have been helpful. But like based on the information that was out there, look, I, I think that like there are a lot of people that felt the same way. So what, what are some of the intangibles? Look, I think, I think the amount of football you've played, I think we've seen this in recent years is one of the things that we probably should pay more attention to is part of Parcells is, you know, commandments and drafting a quarterback um, I think that's important. Like Trey Lance has played very little football since leaving high school. I think that's part of the reason, obviously on top of injuries, why it hasn't worked out. Um, I, I think that, you know, just g general decision-making competitiveness. And then look, uh, like in terms of how you measure this, the resiliency of a guy, there's going to be bad things that happen. How does the guy respond in those moments? Um, you know, in trying to investigate as much as you can what that looks like. So, you know, to, to kind of say, like, hey, what's an intangible? I remember talking to Mac Brown about this specifically about Drake May. And he's like, look, he is from a ridiculously athletic and competitive family. You know, he has older brothers that, look, you had to fight to get the food off the table. If you're going to play pig or horse in the driveway, like, no one was giving you anything. He's flexed the competition muscle his entire life. And, you know, I think that that's been evident from when I've been around him, when I've seen him play. And, and so I think that's some of the stuff that I think matters quite a bit. I would put Eli Manning in a similar category with that. It, this is something that Waddle and I have uh, debated. When we're talking to Tim Hasselbeck, it's Waddle and Sylvie on ESPN 1000. Peggy's in for Waddle. If the Bears agree with you and they they look at drake may and mm -hmm. and they and they say he's the guy and no matter what the the rest of the herd thinks that caleb williams caleb williams caleb williams yeah. redeem drake may the best quarterback prospect do you draft him one 
or do you go to the Commanders and do you trade down to number two and then take Drake May? I want to play around because I, I look, I, I don't mean this. I'm, I'm like with Caleb Williams. I think you can look at Caleb Williams and say, you, you can kind of find some things where you'd say like, all right, that's not ideal. Right. So like just take a size, for example, Like he's not as tall as you would really want the guy to be. Right. And that's the sense that, well, hey, Baker Mayfield was six one. Kyler Murray was smaller. Like, like to me, they're having like as much as we want to point at Drew Brees, there haven't been as many shorter quarterbacks have success as we're trying to make it out to be now. So, like, let's just take that one easily measured thing as an issue. What I would say is, like, find the real drawback on Drake May. Like, what is the thing that really you're like, ah, like, you know what, we've got to concede here. Like, I would tell you that, like, with Mac Jones, like, I think you were making concessions athletically with Mac Jones to draft him where you drafted him. Like, I think you're making concessions with Kyler Murray in terms of his height where you were drafting him. Like, so I think there are, it's easy to find spots where you say, okay, he's not the perfect prospect here in this area. Like, I would say with Drake May, like, what's the, like, what is the issue? Like, I think you could point to his offense and say, listen, two different offenses the last two years, you know, hasn't been under center as much as you maybe would like him to be. But, like, I don't know. I just don't think that, that that's really a big issue. So I, what, so what I'm saying, and I'm taking a long time to get there on it, is I don't think that other people, I don't think this is some unanimous Caleb Williams discussion around the league with everybody but, like, one or two teams. So you would, you would draft him one. Is that what you're saying? No, I think he's the best prospect. Like, I, when I tell you, the size, athleticism, arm strength, who he's on par with, the competitiveness. I think he's going to be a better pro than college player, able to command things at the line of scrimmage. Like, look, I, I, so, so I've been doing this 15 years. Matthew Stafford, Andrew Luck, Trevor Lawrence, like the guys that come through. I, I think that Drake May is the best prospect I've evaluated through this process. That's, that's, those wow. are big words. Wow. Wow, now we'll see if the Bears feel the same way and it would take a it would take a quite a shocking. It would I think if they did that that would draw quite a gasp from uh all the wind in the windy city. But we got to be open to it. Yeah, I know. I know. I hear you. And look, I I don't I mean, here's the thing about the all of these quarterbacks. Look, like you got you still got to go to the right spot have the right things happen. Look, I think Justin Fields was a great prospect. I like Justin Fields way more than most. I think Justin Fields, you know, coming out, had Cam Newton qualities about him. And I still feel that way. Now, did it go perfectly? No, of course it didn't. But, like, I, I, to be honest, I don't really feel much different about my evaluation of him when he was coming out. That didn't mean that it, it all worked out. But he, and I don't know if you guys see it the same way, but, like, he's an NFL starter. And sure. He certainly is a guy that I think could play at a really high level because we've seen glimpses of him. And do, you, do you understand wh- why it's looking like the Bears are going to take a quarterback, number one, and are, tra- are going to trade Justin Fields? Yeah, I mean it's the it's the reset your quarterback contract clock. That's what it is. Like I, I don't think it's because like no one in the building believes you can win with Justin Fields. Like I don't think that that's the feeling at all. I think it's look w- with where we are as a team, rebuilding this, resetting the clock on this just makes more sense. I mean it's what the Jets tried to do. It's okay, I mean, that's just. But it's what Arizona, you know, did. I think they did it pretty quickly. Like that's so yeah, I, I completely understand it. And I think because of that, there'll be a team, Atlanta, Pittsburgh, you know, New England, somebody is gonna end up getting, you know, Justin Fields for a second and a fourth. 
You don't think that if the Bears did not, or you do probably, if the Bears did not have the first overall pick and they were just picking ninth, uh, we would yeah. not even be having the conversation about Justin Fields, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. I think that if you were outside of, you know, picking the, the top three quarterbacks um, and maybe the top two quarterbacks, then I think you say, like, I don't know. Like, we've got enough invested in him. We've seen enough. I mean, it, there is something to the fact that you've seen him make plays at this level. Like, that matters. Like, that's still, like, that still counts for something. I think how many guys we've seen go one overall that didn't end up being any good. Well, so, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think that definitely means something. Which team, if you if you're you're gambling on this, which team are you putting money down that Justin Fields ends up with? Mm, I think I would probably say Atlanta, but I think the better fit for him would be Pittsburgh. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, Pittsburgh's a situation. Here's the thing with Pittsburgh, and people say, "Well, Kenny Pickett's not that old." Well, Kenny Pickett hasn't been healthy, hasn't been all that productive, and Kenny Pickett came into the league. Not as a ready, he came in as a ready-made prospect. He was a guy that had nearly 50 starts in college, or, or maybe even more than that. He was a guy that, like, he wasn't a a, de a developmental draft pick. He was a hey, he's ready to play sooner rather than later. Well, he hasn't played well, and now they're on a new offensive coordinator, and so I don't think you can go into the year as his, with him being your presumed starter with without legitimate competition. So, like, what are they going – but at the same time, like, we're only a couple of years into the, the, the Kenny Pickett era. And so where I think when you look at Atlanta, I think Atlanta, it's like, no, we're looking for a starter right now. The guy comes in and everyone knows he's definitely our starter right now, and we're okay moving heaven and earth to get him. Wow. Are you enjoying coaching? You know, I, I am. It, you know, it's not been the season yet, so I, I'm enjoying the the lead up to it. I do feel far from football, but I I can't wait for it to get here. <laughs> I think it's great that you that you're going back to the that you're in the community and that you are coaching high school with everything yep. that you've accomplished and everything that you do. I, I think it's wonderful because, as we all know, there are really good coaches at that level, and then there are guys that really need some help. And it's always good to have someone who has played the game, uh, understands the game at a high level, and is going to coach it the right way to these kids. I think it's great. Well, well, I appreciate you saying that. It's um, definitely have a passion for it, definitely know the purpose in it, and I really believe I've had a lot of good coaches that like the four years you get to play high school football, should, you should look back on those as the best four years of your life and, you know, with your friends and with that experience. So that's the goal. Um, <laughs> so, that's wonderful. Well, that's awesome. Well, that's awesome. That's, hopefully they like you as much as uh, you liked your coaches, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, may, it may take some time, but hopefully so. Tim, great stuff as always. We appreciate you. Thank you.